Determined to get a conviction and one officer will do anything to achieve it, risking it all for justice. The bill here on ITV1 in half an hour. She was an out-of-work actress watching daytime television when he first caught her eye in 1998. He was a student just back from a gap year. He'd been teaching in a remote African village and impressed the locals so much they made him a chief. But didn't you have a lot of the local farmers bringing their daughters to meet you? Um, occasionally they do try to encourage, you know, to, you know, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a great chat-up, it's all, it's all, it's all, you know, in the pubs in Newcastle, isn't it? You, know, you fancy being the Queen Mother of Ghana. Well, I sat and listened to the interview and saw this man in a, a brightly coloured dress and I thought, I have to watch this and see what it's all about. And I, I must have caught sort of the middle of it whenever he was talking about being able to have 21 virgins of the village and I was disgusted. I thought, yes, that's definitely a perfect show. <laughs> No one could have predicted that Elaine Couples and John Lawler would get together in Newcastle eight years later. And that they'd make history in Ghana, and that she would become an African queen. In 1997, John Lawler from Newton Aycliffe was in a mess. He'd been kicked out of Newcastle University and needed to sort himself out. A gap year in Ghana seemed like a good idea, until he fell down a storm drain and broke his leg the first night he arrived. Undaunted, he made his way here, to Shia, on the Ghanaian border with Togo. Like most villages in this region, Shia is without running water and electricity. Nearly all the 1,500 adults living here are subsistence farmers. John offered to teach in the newly set up secondary school. His enthusiasm and energy made a big impact. When he came, I sat down with him from time to time. We had conversations and I observed his uh, mannerisms. And uh, it struck me that uh, it, he could be a chief because um, I perceived in him uh, certain characteristics uh, which are usually associated with leadership and chieftaincy. After eight months, the village elders appointed John Chief in charge of development. He was named Togby Motti I. Shia became his second home. When he returned to Newcastle, he decided to set up a gap break company called Madventurer. Yeah, Today, it sends people to work on community That's projects throughout the world. For eight years, volunteers have continued his work in Shia, teaching and building toilets, a school and a clinic. <laughs> Meanwhile, Elaine had given up her acting career and turned to a completely different profession. I'd done drama for a couple of years and I was working as a, a, an actor and I was most of the time out of work so as I was doing that I was getting trained up in the, the pub business and became a licensee. I did that for about eight years and then I decided to go back to uni and study nutrition which is what I'm doing now. He sort of walked into the pub one night and I was like, oh my goodness. And he invited me to a fake housewarming party, which I was like, oh yes, I'll go to, no problem. So um, instead of the house party, we ended up going out on a date and it just went from there, really. I didn't recognize him first off. It wasn't until he started talking about Madventure and about his role as a, a Ghanaian chief. And then I thought back and he told me that he'd done the TV interview 
And I thought, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, you're the, the pervert with the 21 virgins, aren't you? And yeah, it took him a while to talk himself out of that situation, but yeah. <laughs> The man who was supposed to have the pick of the girls in Shear eventually asked Elaine to be his bride. But John always has his Ghanaian role to think of, so one spring day, bemused onlookers witnessed a delegation from Shear arrive at Newcastle Central Station. They wanted to see the man they honoured as Chief Togby Motti in his own country. But more importantly, they had to prepare Elaine for her duties as the wife of a village chief. She had a lot to learn. We had a, a few photos um, at the central station and the photographers were saying, can you kiss John? And so I did, I leaned across and given him a kiss and uh, later I was told that I shouldn't have done that. So there is certain places where the women stand, usually behind the men, um, and are told when to move around and yeah, you have to be very careful not to stand on anyone's toes. During afternoon tea with the mayor of Newcastle, the paramount chief made an important announcement. In a few days, you will be married to Ellen. May God bless your marriage. I am pleased to announce that my elders have agreed to confer a chieftaincy title on your fiancé after the civil marriage. <laughs> I would have never, ever have imagined it. Um, just to get married is such a, an honour, and John's such a wonderful guy. To become an African queen, well, it's stuff that dreams are made of, you know. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a sign of our marriage. As a sign of our marriage. May this ring remind us of this moment. May this ring remind us of this moment. And the commitment I have made to you. And the commitment I have made to you. Matfin Hall was a, was a great, you know, it's a traditional ceremony, um, you know, very country house, uh, big golf course, everything else. And, uh, you know, we did have a paramount chief there with an uh, African German band, but apart from that, it was, uh, you know, a traditional fairy tale wedding. John and Elaine wanted their marriage blessed in a church, where better than the biggest church in Shear. Then Elaine could be enthroned as an African queen the following day. This would go down in history as the biggest party ever for the villages of Shear and guests from England. It marks two major historical events. One, it is the first time an Englishman has uh, married from the church point of view in Ghana. And we are very happy that that has happened in Shia. And the second one is because we have installed um, Elaine Couples as the development queen of Shia. So it marks two major historical events has been extremely important for us in this, in this community. A month after the civil wedding at Matman Hall in Northumberland, John and Elaine arrive in Ghana. They aren't allowed into John's village until 48 hours before the marriage blessing. So as honoured guests, they visit projects his company has organised in other villages. This is Habe. It's typical of the villages in this region. They've come here to open the shower and toilet block John's volunteers and local craftsmen have built together. I was a little bit prepared for it, but you know, once you get out here and you see people are living very simple lives, you know, they don't have water, they, you know, they have just about enough food to survive, their, their shelters are very, very simple. It does make you think about your own life and makes you take a step back to think what is important in life. With only three days to go, about 1,000 people have already been invited to the wedding and the numbers are growing daily. Come to Shear and we're going to celebrate and in what I'd like to do is return the thanks for everything you have done for me, for my team, for all the adventurers that have been here. I want to return that thanks and invite you all to a big, big party. There's an unexpected gift of a sheep, but sadly, its days are numbered. Basically, 
gave us a, a sheep as a, as a thank you, um, but it also makes convenience, uh, you know, wedding buffet, uh, you know, later. For a village as small as Shear, the wedding and coronation, which they call an instalment, means preparation on a scale never seen before. John's trying to keep track of the arrangements. At the moment, we have, uh, we've got one big cow. That'll probably be feed about a thousand. We've got, you know, bags and bags of vegetables. Um, all the villagers are, are going to farm. They're bringing produce. Beer, we've, uh, we've ordered 90 crates of, of lager. We've got a few hundred bottles of water, lots of bags of water. We've asked permission for the school that we clear out the desks, move them to all one side, so people are crashing in the school floors. Um, you know, lots of people are organising their own transport, so we have to make sure that they're, they're back again. So it's, it's, I think it's going to be played by uh... Material woven by hand has to be stitched into traditional costumes to fit guests who sent their measurements ahead just days earlier. Is it a little bit too big on yeah. the shoulders? Yeah, I think that's going to fall down. I think anyone's nervous on their wedding day and to have all of this happening at the same time is just, yeah, I think there'll be um, a few last minute nerves, but um, it's just, it's going to be wonderful and it's, it's lovely that we've spent a couple of days beforehand, you know, um, settling in and getting to meet a few people and getting these into it gently. Um, yeah, but it, it'll be lovely, I'm very nervous. <laughs> New look northeast tonight. News from where you live with me, Ian Payne. And me, Pam Royal, with a new programme for the Tees Valley. And if you live in Tyne and Weir, Durham and Northumberland, join me, Jonathan Morell. And me, Philippa Thompson, with news that's closer to you. There's somebody evil in here, and I don't mean somebody living either. Oh, the rat man's coming. After Live, Saturday 9.20 on ITV1. Oh no, is that policeman Barnaby? He's being shot. Well, don't look at me. Behind the well-trimmed hedges. You all right? Absolutely wonderful, sir. The countryside hides the most sinister secrets. Surprised there haven't been any murders. A brand new series of Midsummer Murders, Sunday at 9, ITV1. John and Elaine Lawler have come to Ghana to have their wedding blessed. With only two days to go, at last the wedding party is welcomed into the village of Shear, where the ceremony will take place. In sweltering heat, the procession leads them to the Paramount Chief's Palace for a formal greeting. Every time I come back, it's overwhelming. The first first few hours, because you, you know you get you get to see the people again. But that that reception was the biggest I've ever seen. The drumming, the singing, the, the amount of people that have come out to greet us, and you know these people have never met me before, and they're waving at me and cheering. It was just absolutely incredible. It's the day before the marriage blessing, and at the rehearsal, emotions are running high. <laughs> you are excited. <laughs> it's excited. There would have been even more tears if John hadn't realised he'd got the time of the wedding wrong. It was scheduled in church for 9am, but the invitations said 12 noon. Yeah, so the chiefs are going to, instead of the chiefs arriving late and missing the whole wedding, which would have caused massive uproar, 
um, we're, we're having to change the whole wedding to match the invites, which I accidentally got wrong. So, uh, easy mistake to happen. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, fine. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. Oh. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. Look At least good. Elaine's traditional oh, dress for the coronation yeah, fits I'll, now. I'll take that off. Then she's presented with gifts from the Paramount Chief. His and her thrones and all the regalia fit for a queen. Right. I can look like. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> and this is the fan for the queen. Uh -huh. Fan hair. Ah, oh, that's so <laughs> uh -huh. Yes. Wow. <laughs> this is your regalia. You put it on the left. Sorry, sorry. Yes. Uh -huh. And that goes over? It's just the same, the one you choose. Oh, it's okay, we can nail it. Fit. It's okay now, eh? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> That's a perfect fit. Yes. So, uh -huh. yourself, you can dress it, then you adjust uh -huh. fine. At last it's the big day. Among the guests are many who've walked miles to be here and also British volunteers from community projects. For the first time we had cheese from Piki, cheese from other communities, more than 50 miles, more than 100 miles away. And that, we think, was quite fantastic and we were very pleased that Shia should become the focal point for all these people. Despite putting the wedding back from nine till noon, it's still running late because the blushing bride's gone down with a nasty dose of dysentery. So we've had a little bit of a sort of emotional morning. Uh, we've had to change the schedule a bit, so we're already running a little bit late. I've arranged with the father that if, if, the, if, the, you know, if she needs to go, because um, she's still not very well, then uh, you know, then the band will play, and then we can just stop the service, keep doing that, and hopefully, uh, you know, get through to the end. I call upon these I call upon these persons here present persons here present to witness to witness that that I I Elaine Francis couples do take the do take the John Lawler to be my lawful wedded husband to be my lawful wedded husband to have to have and to hold and to hold from this day forward from this day forward for better for worse for better for worse for richer for poorer for richer for poorer in sickness in sickness and in health and in health to love to love and to cherish to cherish till death do us part till death do us part <laughs> never seen that many people in that church and I knew it could sort of seat about 500 and there was definitely more than 500 in there because it was crammed at the back um, 
but it was amazing you know to see well lots of noise lots of color um, everybody you know sort of shouting the well wishes uh, every time you know we spoke or moved it's just uh, nothing like Matt from Hall I think I was feeling mixed emotions I was really nervous and also excited I had a few um, toilet episodes which I was uh, I think that was you know at the heart of it um, I was scared in case I would have to run out in the middle of the ceremony but I managed to keep myself you know, calm and collected um, throughout, so it wasn't too bad, but the people there just made the entire um, wedding special. And we had so many people there and we, we sat down and had some food and some drink and there was a lot of dancing and each village came up and presented us with gifts, which, you know, we weren't expecting. And we cut the cake as, as you would do. In a, um, yeah, it was just an amazing experience. It's the morning after. Despite the health setbacks, Elaine's instalment as queen can't be postponed. At one point I thought I was going to pass out because the heat is so intense. I, I left it here, my speech. <laughs> I was asked to do um, a little speech to address the chiefs. Um, so I had that written down and then all of a sudden it vanished and we lost it. And I was about to go out and address the chiefs of the all these villages that had come and I had nothing to say. Um, but that turned up and um, I went out and I managed to do the speech and it was just, it was unreal, the whole instalment. It was just nothing that I could ever have imagined it would be. She looked absolutely gorgeous and, you know, as soon as I put the crown on it, was uh, I was holding back a, you know, possibly a bit of flood, floods of tears. So uh, when she sat amongst the chiefs and queen mothers at the end, you know, it was like, wow. You know, just uh, I think she she looked the part. You know, she fitted right in. Everybody seems to love her. We believe that this is a lifetime experience for anybody, because uh, we are not expecting a replication in the nearest uh, future. Yeah. It may happen one day, but maybe it will take centuries. Like John, for the rest of her life, Elaine will have a double identity. Her Ghanaian title is Mama Amenyo Niyowu Sika which means people are more precious than gold. She'll be responsible for youth work in the village. The, the Council of Chiefs. And, and for Chief Togbi Moti, it's straight down to business with the village elders, planning their next projects. Togbi Moti is our development chief. The wife is our development queen. So they are very pivotal. The whole development is going to rotate on them because they are the leaders, they are supposed to lead in terms of development. So they are extremely very important. Yes, it's, it's quite a, a scary prospect, to be honest. Um, I think it's because they hold um, John with such regard that he's done so much for the village and for the people um, that they're, they're putting a lot of um, faith in me because they've only met me once, which is an amazing honor and I want to fulfill that as much as I can and take my responsibilities as serious as I can. And I'll just have to balance my life around it. Well, I've been playing the, the role of chief now for eight years out in Shia. And uh, you know, now that I've, I've, I've found love and I've, and I've got myself a wife, it's great that you know, Elaine can get stuck into that role as well and, and help me give back to that community and get involved in everything that I'm doing out in Ghana. So uh, I get the best of both worlds, a, a great wife and a partner who can, who can join in with everything that I do with, with out in Africa from now on. What does it say about their relationship? <laughs> How could she do that to herself? I'd leave them if you wore that jumper. <laughs> Those clothes have a life of their own. <laughs> Are those wings or is that a jacket? You would never put those two together. <laughs> He's married his mother. It just shows there's someone for everyone. Trini and Susanna Undress, coming soon to ITV One. When you do wrong, you get a smack for it. 
I smacked him. I didn't lose control. It just, like, makes us angry. You've got to show your authority. I don't care. I would even do it in front of a police officer. Beneath the skin of a parental dilemma...